Hey guys, it's Old Man G here, back again with another video for Red Devil Studio. And today we're going to talk about what I think is the best United starting eleven this season. Hopefully, obviously, um, the season will finish. Um, if you're new to the channel, please like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Studio. Follow us on Twitter, United X. We also have Instagram and Twitch on Red Devil Studio. Links are in the description to be part of the Red Devil Studio community. So this is going to be one of like many types of videos that I'm going to be trying to do. Um, short but sweet kind of videos. We talk about a lot of United Way topics. Um, best this, top five that. And so I thought the best way to kick off would actually be to look at what I think is the best um, United starting 11 for the season. What Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has to pick from. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. Um, in goal, Dav De Gea. I don't think there's any um, debate about whether he should be in goal. I know Romero has done really, really well for United, especially in the, in the games that he's been in. And I, I'm aware that De Gea has made um, mistakes, um, significant mistakes, I might I add. But I still think that as United's number one, he's, 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 he's still our best keeper overall. Um, I do think maybe as years come, I, you might have a Romero and even Henderson might be a look looking and he's not performed the best he has this season but in terms of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's best starting 11 it has to be David here and we mustn't forget the amount of saves that he has made for us this season that have kept us in games um, so with you know a solid a, sol a solid defense um, and a good keeper um, which I think David Hayes still is I think that he gets in United's best starting 11 as our keeper center backs now um, so let's look at uh, the centre back. So, personally for me, um, Eric Bay has to be in that in the in the best. And this is the best talking about the best squad. Um, Eric Bay has to be there. Yes, I know he's injury prone. Yes, I know that he um, he takes risks, but he's so good on the ball. Um, it's not funny. Um, his distribution is good. Not to mention the fact that like he's good in the air. I think he's just he, he's he's got a good tackle on him. He just overall, you know, he is a good defender. And more importantly, he also has pace, um, which I think Maguire and Loft don't. I think the problem with playing Maguire and Loft together, as we've seen a few times this season, is that they get outdone by pace. Even balls over the top, they get outdone with. Um, and there was one game where I think it was against Liverpool, where Daniel James was, you know, you know, trying to get back and almost got back to catch Salah. You know, where were the centre backs? You know, they don't have that pace to be able to sort of to get back into position in time. So for me, Eric Bay is the first centre back of choice that goes into this best um, team. Alongside of him, alongside him, I would say it's Harry Maguire. I'm not saying the Linda Boffers had a terrible season, but Harry Maguire does give us more in the air. I do think since he's come obviously um, to Manchester United, he has slowly but surely improved, which you would expect, but with like any Manchester United player. Um, and um, I think Harry Maguire um, um, alongside Eric Bay, I think they do complement each other, certainly more so than I think Maguire and Lindelof. And let's not forget, we did spend just last summer 80 minutes on him, so he's gone after play. So Harry Maguire and Eric Bay is my two centre backs. Um, moving on, now obviously we are playing what I think is a, should be a 4 3 3, um, and I'll explain more about that a bit later. So right back. No debate, it's going to be Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Aaron Wan-Bissaka, Wan -Bissaka, Mr. Titan has been absolutely amazing for Manchester United this season. Um, arguably the play Manchester United's player of the year. Arguably the best defensive right-back in Europe. I can't think of a single right-back that has the best, better defensive attributes than Aaron Wan-Bissaka. And for me, if he was coached to to improve you know, his his. his, his, his attacking play, which he is getting better at, as we've seen, um, he could be the best right back in the world. He's got that potential because nothing gets past him. Um, the Sterling City game, I mean, he is that good, you know, so I don't think there's any debate that he, uh, 50 million at this point is a steal for Aaron Bissak. I don't think anyone is complaining about the amount that we spent on Aaron I think I would argue that if his attacking player was, was better, he could easily go for 100 million in the next two years or so. So, and one percent on the right. Now on the left, I know there's been a lot of hype around Brandon Williams, but I think that Luke Shaw should go on the left. I think Luke Shaw has shown the last um, two months or so um, why we spent the money on him. Um, I think he's almost gone back to his Southampton days, you know, and 
thankfully has remained injury free, which is good. Um, but for me, um, uh, Luke Shaw, I think has the experience. I also think defensively, and and, and, and note this um, in the City game when I was there, um, when City brought on Riyad Mahrez, and Riyad Mahrez was dominating uh, Brandon Williams on that side. And as soon as Luke Shaw sort of came on, he was able to sort of usher him out and deal with that threat. And obviously, we were able to go and see the game. I do think Brandon Williams has a lot of potential. Um, and I certainly think that thanks to what he's contributed to the team, I don't think we need to go out in the summer and get another left back. But I do think that um, for now, Luke Shaw um, has shown what he can contribute to this team. Um, and I think it's proved a lot of haters wrong right now. So he goes in the left back in what is our best United starting eleven. Now, moving on. Now, remember I said that we were going to be doing a 4-3-3, um, a, a four, three, three, you know, and personally, you know, and I don't know, I know Solskjaer will play, will play two holding midfielders. I know he'll play two runners, but I feel to get the best out of this Manchester United squad, certainly going forward, we only should play with one holding midfielder, okay? Um, and in that case, that has to be Matic. OK, um, I know that a lot of people think, you know, Fred is not that so. But for me, Fred and McTominay are, they can play that role, but Matic plays it the best. OK, and we're talking about our best starting eleven here. And in that position, Matic plays it best. He has to. Um, so, and he's been, and he's obviously signed a contract extension. And the last two or three months, we've obviously made for injuries. He stepped in and he's done a good job. Notably, again against City, when we were getting spanked when he wasn't there, 3-0. He comes on the second half and he stabilises things. I think Solskjaer is aware of that now. I do think that we can't rely on Matic long-term, so that's why we should probably go for like an party on Ndidi in the summer. But I do think that um, you've got to play Matic there. Okay, If you have Matic there as a one-holding, then you've got license to, to, to play a box-to-box -box and a more attacking mid -mid midfield, which is how I think Manchester United should play. Now, the box-to-box -box midfielder is, is interesting. Um, a part of me says Pogba should be here, okay? Because, when Pogba, because Pogba will be fit when the season hopefully resumes. Um, but a big part of me, and a, the more logical part of me, says that Fred has got to play here. Um, because Fred has shown, in the absence of Paul Pogba, obviously bearing in mind he actually, he's, he's vocal that he wants to stay at the club, which is obviously positive. But Fred has shown that he is passionate about the badge, he's passionate about United, and he really wants to go team forward. And based on merit alone, I think that Fred has to be in, the, in this position. I think, yes, it's the best. And yes, I think if Fred doesn't have a good game, Pogba can go in. But I think as well, um, you know, it, it's the difference between, you know, a player that wants to be the club and a player that potentially doesn't. But also the connection between Fred and Bruno. But obviously, both of them speak Portuguese. You can see that they've got that connection between themselves and I just wonder if you introduce a Pogba into that situation um, are you going to get that same connection with the player I'm going to mention next which is aka Bruno Fernandes Bruno Fernandes is obviously going to be in, in, in the more advanced position in front of the, front of, front of the midfield um, he does have that connection with Fred which is good um, I'd be interested to see how Pogba fits in So, but for now I think you have Matic um, Fred and Bruno Fernandes who is our basically most creative player on the field um, I think that is us, 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 us going forward. I think he's very, um, he's changed the team so much since he's arrived. Um, and he deserves, I mean, it's, it's obvious that we needed that type of player because we weren't creating chances. We just weren't. Um, Pogba was our chance creator. Um, now we've got Bruno, we've got someone who can create chances. Um, and uh, and he's, he's just been a, a revelation to this team and everyone has, has responded as a result. So Bruno Fernandes definitely... I'm obviously in that position. So we're left with our front three. Um, so on the left, obviously, by the point, Rashford will be back. So for me, um, you know, you put Rashford on the left. I don't think Rashford is. I know we tried it, but I don't think Rashford is a number nine. I think Rashford has to be play on the left. Um, and uh, I think he's, he's better suited to that, to that, to that side. Um, he obviously gives us all. I would argue that... Um, there was at least one or two months, to be honest, this season where, you know, Rashford wasn't playing well at all. Now, that part of that could be because he was being forced to play as number nine, which I don't think he's his position at all. I don't think he can do, he's not great at it. Um, but I do think on that left, he gives you a threat, especially when he went up with the link up player Martial. And that for me is my number nine, is anti Martial, you know. So I, you know, I, I am Nigerian, I love Igalo. I think Igalo, um, 
um, deserves immense credit for what he's done and what he's contributed. Um, um, but I think Agala works a lot better as that additional option. I think if we're going to start strong, if we're going to go out, because I want United to go out and attack teams. We want to go out and attack teams with pace. Um, I think Agala can contribute to that. But I think that with the three people that in the midfield, obviously, like I said, with, with um, Rashford and Fit, obviously, on the left, and Marshall on the right, that link up to, together very, very well. I'm sure they'll link up with Bruno Fernando that, that's there. I think that you can get a really, really good... Um, really good harmony um, with, 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 with this team, you know, especially if, you know, Pogba comes in, Agala obviously comes in, you know, we've got that depth there. But for me, Martial is is the number nine. I think he, I think he's actually had, despite what he is saying, saying, oh, he's lazy, I think he's actually had quite a good season. Um, and I think, um, and I think, you know, um, with the form that he was on, he, he definitely, he definitely beyond record to break in. He's obviously a goal scoring record this season, despite the fact that he gives off the impression that he's lazy, even though he's really not. Um, last but not least, um, who plays on the right? Um, it's a difficult one. Um, I'm going to go out and say, um, I'm going to say Mason Greenwood for now. Um, I, I'm really, t- I mean, for me, the thing is, I love Daniel James and I love his his commitment and obviously you can sense his, his, his frustration with not not um, being being able to score and contribute as, as much as he did before, and he does give us he does give us a lot. Um, but I just think that I feel like he's better off the left. I don't think he's a right wing. Is essentially the point I'm trying to make. I don't think Mason Greenland necessarily is either, but I do think that there's a better um, connection. With them, also I feel that Greenwood Greenwood is more technically gifted in terms of how he's able to finish. Um, have you seen some of Mason Greenwood's goals this season? His finishing is is almost Roman van Persie's in how he's able to finish and how he's able to create. Um, but also I think that intelligence wise, Greenwood's also a bit there. Like he does take more sensible decisions, in my opinion, than Daniel James does. So for me, I think you until we get maybe a better or an actual right winger summer, like a Sancho, even a Dama Traore, I think that um, I think you put um, Mason Green in there for time being. With Daniel James coming mentioned to give you that pace, maybe in the last 30 minutes or so, to really get out of the opposition. Um, so that's it, guys. That is our best United starting eleven for this 2019-2020 season. Let me know what you think. So you've obviously got David De Gea in goal, by Maguire as a centre-back. So obviously, Bamba Sack on the right, and Sean on the left. Matic holding, you've got Fred, you've got um, Bruno Fernandes ahead of them, then you've got the right Greenwood, number nine Martial, and on the left you've got Rashford as well. Let me know if you agree in the comments, maybe you think, maybe disagree with some of those selections, if you think um, I'm just talking nonsense, you know, so maybe you agree with absolutely everything I said, who knows. If you're new, please subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, smash the notification button, get involved in the comments, and let me know what type of videos you guys, you guys want as well. Um, if you want my views on top 10 this or top 5 that, um, I'd appreciate it. Have a nice day, guys, and cheers.